presented by Historic Redeemer Lutheran Church in Elmhurst, Illinois. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why did Jesus ascend into heaven? There are many reasons that have been explored over the years as the church on earth has celebrated the ascension of our Lord. And indeed, there are many good reasons. It's certainly for our benefit, we have no doubt about that, because Jesus said it would be, just as everything that Jesus does is for our benefit. And yet we have another reason presented to us today. It's a simple reason, yes, but it's a good one nonetheless. Jesus told his apostles gathered there, everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Jesus ascended into heaven so that all scripture would be fulfilled. Indeed, all things in creation would be fulfilled now that he was sitting at the right hand of the Father, salvation completed as he was made head over all things, who fills all in all, as we just heard in our epistle reading from Ephesians this morning. He had accomplished and fulfilled everything for the redemption of man. Now, it even included blazing a trail for us for our own ascension into the presence of God. And until that time when we follow his invisible footsteps into heaven, Jesus has left us standing order, has left standing orders for his disciples. At his ascension, Jesus left his final word of promise for the church. Jesus promised that repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name. He told the apostles that they would be witnesses of these things, and indeed they were. They went throughout the known world, telling everyone what Christ had accomplished for them in his suffering and rising again on the third day. And, unsurprisingly, the church is still witness to these things. Now, we aren't witnesses in the same way that the apostles were. No matter how old any of us are, no one was around to see the events that they did. But we are witnesses. These things have been made known to us. They're known to us through the scriptures. The scriptures have been opened to us so that we can understand them. That's what Jesus was doing when he explained his role in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. When it says that Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures, it doesn't mean that he was giving them some secret code to unlock the sacred pages. He wasn't imparting some special light or insight that they, would, that they alone would possess. No, he simply gave them the key to understanding all of Scripture. And that key was himself. He told them what all the Scriptures were about. Him. These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. So the opening of Scripture simply means knowing that everything contained in it has been pointing to him and what he's done. It means knowing that all of Scripture, the law, the prophets, the Psalms, the histories, all of it finds its fulfillment in him. So when the psalmist says in our intro this morning, God has gone up with a shout, He's talking about Jesus ascending. When the prophet Elijah is carried up into heaven in a chariot of fire when his work was done, 
That's pointing forward to this even greater ascension of Jesus. It's been about him and what he accomplishes for the children of man. And so that means we study it. We gladly hear and learn it when it's offered to us. We can't be witnesses of these things if we don't know what the these things contained in scriptures are. So come and learn. Carve out time in your day to read just a few passages. Pray with those verses in mind. Look for places where the readings for each Sunday connect to what we say and sing in the service. Pay attention to the words of the service. Yes, pay attention to that even more than the tune or the style. That will open your mind to the scriptures and it will give you the words to say when you're called to be his witness. We are witnesses to all of it. Everything accomplished by him in every book of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, everything. This is what the church proclaims. This is what we proclaim in our lives wherever the Lord has placed us. We make this known as his witnesses. Now this can be a daunting task. It's intimidating at times. We often don't feel up to it. We feel like we don't understand enough or that we'll say the wrong thing. We feel like we're not worthy. Now the apostles must have felt this way too. After all, remember, they scattered when he was arrested. They denied him. They hid. They locked themselves up, even after his resurrection, out of fear. And so to counter this reluctance and fear... Jesus gave them not only marching orders, but he also enabled them to do it. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. Jesus blessed his disciples then, and he blesses his disciples now. Jesus promised to bless the church. Now, Pay close attention and notice exactly what our reading says. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into heaven. Notice that it doesn't say anywhere that he stopped blessing them or that he finished blessing them, even though he was parted from their sight. While he blessed them, he was parted. They couldn't see him anymore, but there was no reason to think that he had stopped blessing them. And that's why they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. That's why they were continually in the temple blessing God. Even though they couldn't see him anymore, they knew that he was still blessing them. That celestial river was still flowing, unimpeded, from the very right hand of God, from the raised hands of Jesus. And because it was coming from their Lord, whose word could heal and create and raise the dead, they knew that his blessing would actually do what it said. It would give them strength, and courage, and wisdom. It would give them forgiveness. It would give them peace. Now this ongoing blessing still continues upon Jesus' disciples today. We may have times of fear, strain, stress, frustration, or reluctance to be his witnesses. We may have our questions since Jesus is parted from our sight, just as the apostles surely did. But Jesus is still sending the promise of the Father. That is, he's still sending the Holy Spirit to strengthen our faith, to light our way through dark times, to turn us back to the words that Jesus spoke while he was still walking this earth. The Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, is with us. Jesus is with us. He may not be seen by our eyes, but he is still here among his church. 
so listen for his voice. Listen for his voice in the scriptures. The words that he gave us while he was still here on earth. Hear him in the proclamation of repentance and forgiveness in his name. Whether it's at the beginning of the service or just before communion in that blessing, the peace of the Lord be with us, be with you always, which is answered by our joyous Amen. Hear his strengthening and life-giving words as he makes us our own in holy baptism, in the name of the Father and the Son and the promised Holy Spirit. Know that he is still with his church, truly bodily present in his supper, even though we can't see it, when he comes to be with us in body and blood, to bless us with forgiveness, life, and salvation. When our hearts are lifted up to the Lord, ascended with him, so that, we continue, so that we can continually dwell with him there. His blessing still continues. Even though he is ascended and doesn't tread the highways of this world as he once did, he's still present in these gifts, these blessings, still given to us in such abundance that we can't help but continually thank our Lord and God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And even when we realize that we may not be able to see him anymore, we still know that we can have great joy because of his blessings, his promises that won't ever stop. We might even end up walking the path of the apostles, even to persecution and mockery and death. We may trudge through dark and difficult times when we wish we could see him like people did before, But we know that no matter what happens, it will only end in our own ascension. Jesus has fulfilled all things. Salvation is complete. There's nothing more to be done. You are witnesses of these things. These things happening in Scripture, these things happening in this very sanctuary. Behold, the promise of the Father has been sent to you in fullest measure. So return to your homes. Return to this temple time and again, blessing and thanking God. In the name of Jesus, our ascended Lord and King. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.